Hey, D, hey, have a up? seat. What's have a seat? Have a seat. I don't know. Oh, lean back. Uh, what do you think, huh? That's some good sun. Yeah, but it's, it's also comfortable. You think it's comfortable? Yeah, and it's structurally sound too because it's holding my big butt. <laughs> but what is it? This is an extremely easy chair to make. Hold that. Okay, watch. It's knocked down. Okay, it's a two-piece chair, and it stores just like that. Oh wow! I want to make one. Let's do it. <laughs> so, Sedge, where do we start? I mean, do you have plans or? No. <laughs> okay. So, I got to tell you a little bit about the history of this chair and how I learned to make it. Okay. okay. Uh, this was a training class. I was in Germany and we built this. Um, we did it in an afternoon. It was really quick. And I said, you know what? I'm going to make one of these when I get home. So long story short, <laughs> well, actually it's a little bit of a long story. Um, they, I was given a piece of paper like this and it had just a basic drawing of this and this. And I wanted to create it where I could do this out of a simple two by 12 that you get in any home center. Okay. So I kind of tweaked at the dimensions and let's step over here just for a second. And like anything you're going to learn from me as we go through the process of you becoming the ultimate cabinet maker, furniture builder, <laughs> woodworker. <laughs> um, I'm going to show you some of the tips and tricks that I have tweaked, learned, uh, made a boatload of mistakes over the years. You're going to make a boatload of mistakes with me. I continue to do it. So not to get too oh, wordy, I make templates for everything. Because when I know I'm building something, and as the process of design comes in my head, I'm going, I always take two steps back and go, well, wait a minute. I like this, and I know other people in my family are going to want one. And I want to speed up the operation. So we're going to front load some time on this. Okay. Um, I, well, for us, I already did the front load time. I made templates of my first chair. Okay. Uh, it was pretty simple. I took that piece of paper and I made larger dimensions on a printer and I kept bringing it out, bringing it out and kept enlarging it. And I took pieces and parts of it and laid it out on a two by 12. Okay. And then I traced it. Okay. I made the chair and then I said, time out. I'm going to make templates now. So I took the time of making a template and now you'll see when I say this is a wicked easy chair to make, <laughs> it really is because we're just going to cut a two by 12 in quick dimensions, trace this out, cut it close with a jigsaw and then take these templates and use a router with a pattern cutting bit. Okay. And everything, and then we're going to fine tweak it. And yes, we'll use like a file in here to fine tweak the through hole. Uh, we're going to talk uh, for folks watching at home. We're going to talk about through some of the dimensions with you. Will we have plans for this? Not at this moment, but eventually we will. But hopefully you can see some of the dimensions as I, we and Derek and I go through this, that you'll be able to build one of these at home. And we'll have a great video series of how to build this chair. Now, I'm going to come back over, D, and I want to talk about this chair. It's a knockdown. It lays flat. Okay, but what's really neat about it is I heard somebody say that this was an African birthing chair. And I went, what? It is. If you type in Google and hit images, right, it, this comes up. Uh, this chair design has been around forever wow. and it's just a typical African birthing chair and it, it, it's actually comfortable. Oh yeah. It, it's one piece of two by 12. Well, and I noticed the angle too. That's one of those more ergonomic seat angles too. Okay. So what's really neat about it is I've tweaked this. Okay. Now what if this was longer? It would come up, right? Right. Okay, so you can tweak it by extending this piece from here to here. Okay, and once you get it in there, we'll fiddle with it a little to make sure it slides together. Okay. And next summer, maybe we can throw some uh, paint or some lacquer on here. And but this has been out in the weather, whew, probably for a couple years now. And I just I just sand it every once in a while to take some of the 
the stuff that grows on it outside. <laughs> it's a it's a fun chair. Uh, it's I mean there was one afternoon I think I built five of them for a friend. He thought, man, it's uh, taken me forever, and it was no. I have a template, Thanks. and it's a two by twelve. Cool. So let's get started. All right. So, so where do we start? It's simple. We got a uh, two by twelve, which we know is an inch and a half by eleven and a half, and that's the way we designed this. Okay, for this width. So what I learned early on is instead of trying to do everything on this length, this is an eight foot length. Let's cut it down to manageable pieces. How's that? Sounds good. You got it. So I could measure this like this and say, okay, we need one 45 inches, okay, or 46 inches, or 1,160 millimeters. <laughs> okay, we already have the templates. So this is the way I take this. Look, I usually just take it like this. I leave a little here. Okay, and I just go like this, boom, okay, and I always, I leave maybe a, a few millimeters there, a few millimeters here. There's one, I'll have you take this down to this end, okay, we're not really concerned, go ahead, walk around, do that, yep. A little extra. Yep, right there, okay, so let's go and get it cut and cross cut it properly. Okay, so a couple of things, we get it up here on our, sli our slide compound miter saw, and what I always make sure when I set things up, that that's at zero and it's locked down, okay? And I always come up to the bevel, all right? Because you don't want to be cutting something and putting things together and someone had bumped into this sure. and now things are coming at an angle. So always come up to your saw and make sure, I'm gonna set this back here, that I have that positive stop at zero and go ahead and lock that in D. Okay. So now our saw is set up. Now the other thing too is this, this board's got a lot of weight, okay? But always remember this, Get in the habit of using a hold down. Okay. Okay. It doesn't take any much extra time just to take a hold down and lock it in. And that just keeps it safe, keeps a piece of movement. Well, it's going to, you know, we're not, we don't have anything captured. We could have used this on either side. But when we start using the stops, you always use a hold down on the side where it's captured for re repeatability. Okay. Follow? Okay. Now, I'm gonna make this cut so I can teach you a few things. Sounds good. All right. When you're using a saw like this, you start it up, you bring it all the way out, okay? You bring it down and you push it forward. Okay? And you always let it come down from the cut and then you bring it up, okay? Now, the nice thing about this saw, <laughs> when I used to cut with slide compounds, I didn't have great dust extraction. Look, there's no dust floating around. I like that. The dust extraction on this saw is absolutely fantastic. <laughs> so, All right. <laughs> All right. So we have this. We know this is the end we cut it. Here's what's important. Mark your boards. Okay. Okay, look. And it's just simple. Because this is where we cut it on our slide compound miter saw, we know that's 90. Okay. Okay, we know this one is 90. Okay, dead on. But make sure you have a good square. We'll set that aside. Okay, now, let's take our templates. Okay. See how I can put that perfectly in line? Oh, yeah. Just like this. See how this is just a little narrower? Okay. Got it like that? Yeah. Okay. Now, what I want you to do... I'm going to hold it here, okay, Okay, and I want you to trace around the whole board. Okay. Okay? And just take your time. Okay? So that's just, we're just going to cut here. Oh, here's going for okay. Aha. <gasps> uh -huh. Very good. And that's where the square is, and that's what we needed. Here and here. Okay? So let's just take this board off. Okay. So we know this one is where it's square. So where do you think, what end do you think we have to line up? On here. I would say probably this one because of the flats. Ah, go ahead. Okay. And I'll have you line it up. Right. With my feelers. Yes, sir. There you go. Okay. Good. Good. I'm gonna hold it and you're gonna trace it. Alright. We get don't forget we get this oh, little yeah. little act down here. Now you're gonna notice something. Okay, and the way I wanted to make sure that this would happen is I measure I, I don't know if you saw this, but I was measuring this dimension right here. This oh. is nine and a half. Okay. Could you do this out of a two by 10? 
Me? Probably not, because I'd probably mess it up. And then... You, then you would end up with these little ledges that are typical on uh, this material, and you could potentially do it out of a one by 10, but this little bit of waste will really aid us and we'll get nice crisp edges with that router after it's in a template. Oh, nice. Okay, so I'm gonna tell you right now, I chose two by 12s instead of two by 10s. Okay, but you could do this potentially out of a two by 10 if you had some kicking around. Hey, Sedge, when we were doing the templates, I noticed there's a lot of writing and marking. I can see- I A lot of numbers. What does it all mean? Okay, so whenever you make a template, label it. Okay. It's, it's your template. Makes Who cares sense. what people uh, see or whatever because it jogs my memory. Okay. okay. And I write tons of stuff on here. Like, Chris, if you can come in here and check this out. See, look, my first one I did was out of Southern Yellow Pine. That's what I wrote, but man, this one, I may make one of these. Look, out of six quarter maple, six quarter cherry. If we look over here, uh, my overall dimension from here to here is 240 millimeters. I always scribe center lines on everything. I did one here. Um, I label center line. I say the dimension from here to here is 100 millimeter. If we look in here, I had to cut. Okay, because the 100 millimeter is at the base right here but I had to cut this uh, 40 millimeters and you'll see how that works out where the dimension in here, and I believe this was 40 millimeters tall yep. and a dimension here, if we look, is 100 or roughly 100 yeah. millimeters. See okay. that? So that way there, this tenon, after we create this mortise. Ooh. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna start to get our dimensions of these traced pieces here. Okay. Okay, we'll start using jigsaws. We'll start using, um, we're gonna use a, a drill bit, okay? Because we're gonna drill a hole for this and cut close to the line. Oh, okay. But we are gonna finish it up with a router. Cool? That's good. So there you go. All right. We, like you just said, we got that 90 degree on there. But if we come in here, I highlighted this line. See this? Okay. I, you traced it, but I wanted to darken it a little. Okay. Um, what we're using today is we're using our vacuum clamp, and I get a narrow pod on here, and it's dropping right in here. Okay, that's where it's locking in. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut this line, so I'm gonna show you how to do this. Okay. Okay. But if we think about it, I, go, I gotta go from here, and I'm gonna stay about an eighth of an inch away, okay, all the way down to here, okay? Because we're gonna finish up with the router. So what I'll do is I'll come in here and cut close. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a series of relief cuts close to the line. So as I'm cutting, those pieces will drop out. Okay. Okay, now I hooked up a jigsaw and I got dust extraction on here, but what I wanted to do for clarity when we're shooting this is I left the uh, zero clearance uh, splinter guide off because Think about it, I'm not really concerned about splintering right. because I need to, I'm gonna finish it up with a router. Okay, so I'll get it started, I'll do this side and then we'll flip it around and you do this side. Sounds good. Okay. And you can see how close I get to the line. And you can come back. That's about as close as I like to get. You don't want to leave a lot because that may make the router catch a little. Okay. Okay? So I'm going to make a couple of relief cuts here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to swing this around and I'm going to cut straight up here. You're not really concerned about, I mean, look at that cut. It's a. It's a wavy cut. It doesn't matter. You're just getting close to the line. Wait till you see after we finish with the router. Oh. Now, another thing to feel when you're doing this, this grain line wants to take me in, so I should be staying away a little bit further. Okay. Okay, and I just don't want to cut my clamp either. Now, when you're using a jigsaw, always remember this. If you find yourself in an awkward position, get out of it. Okay. Stop the jigsaw in mid-cut and then pull it out. Follow me? Yep. Okay. Good. 
So what I want to do is now this one, you're coming straight up here, and I'm gonna, so this is our line right here, right? right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw a line for you to follow exact. That way there, you know. Okay. Now, what's really weird about this cut is you're gonna come probably over here and cut this and follow this line. You don't wanna rock the base, so your pressure's here on the base, okay? Okay. You'll see it. So come right over here. There you go. Oh, because I have a little... Yeah, huh? That's because part cool. of the base isn't working on there. Oh, no, 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 no. I want to point this out. Okay? I saw you tilting that base. And if we look right here, I think we're going to get away with it. Okay? But... It wasn't the blade wandering, it was you tilting the base. Okay. Follow me? Yeah. So I always try to put pressure on the base, but my finger's away from the blade. Follow? Right. So okay. So a lot of times when people think the blade, I'll say it again, they think the blade's wandering like this. It's not the blade. And it's because with this jigsaw, those, um, that blade's being supported down below. Okay. And this is, jigsaws, there's a little technique to using them. Right. Okay. I just wanted to point that out because you see now it's the base. You were tilting the base. Right. Okay. And I noticed that, but I think we, we got it. You'll, you'll see. It'll come out beautiful. Okay. Cool. All right. So now comes the fun part. As we look at this, this is a, a learned uh, process. <laughs> I'm still learning. Okay. okay. No, this is a really good example or a good exercise for us. Okay, see how I cut a little bit closer than Big D did? Okay. I am used to cutting close or fairly close to a line with a jigsaw because I don't want to uh, overtax or I don't want to do a lot of routing. I'm just trying to clean up an edge. Gotcha. But as Big D's getting used to using a jigsaw and the right techniques of making sure that that base stays stout on here and at a 90, okay? Because you don't want to deflect the blade. Right. Okay? Um, that's a really good job for one of your first times using a jigsaw. Well, thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Let's get on to the other piece. So what are, we, what are we doing on this one? We've got to cut close to the line before we template it with the router. <laughs> that's all right. Let's go. <laughs> okay. Give me one here, one here, and one here, but don't come all the way to the end, okay? Those are just gauge marks. So what we're gonna do is, you did your relief cuts here. This is the bottom of the chair. We gave it a slight ack. Okay. Say that. Arc. Ack. Ah. Okay. So I learned something in showing somebody how to cut with a jigsaw today. Um, I drew a secondary line for Big D to follow. Okay, just really rough. So you understand what I meant by getting close to the line. Right. Okay, so I want you to start here, cut to here, you'll see the drop, then cut here. Now, it's gonna feel really awkward if you continue. So stop, okay. and then hit it from this attack after. Gotcha. Okay. Remember, it doesn't have to be perfect. And stop. Big D, that was absolutely perfect. And you can always move it so it's comfortable. I bet you that's more comfortable. Just a little bit. Yeah, and, and, the, and so think about this. When you're, I'm just gonna step in so you can see this, okay? When you're doing this, okay, this is your pivot point. You don't move this. You move this. This is your lever back here. Okay. okay? But make sure you're keeping this flat. flat. Okay. So it's just it's just getting used to the tool. That's all. And with the tool's capabilities. You got a big D. You got a big D. How good do you feel? 
I feel like now that what? From what I expect, Does that feel comfortable there? Well, because yeah, it feels more like you're driving one of those like like a like a forklift. You get your wheels in the back and you're churning in the back. That's a great way to explain yeah. it, Big D. Hey. Oh, sometimes oh, no. grasshopper become master pole. <laughs> <laughs> let's do it. Okay, you feel, hey, wait a minute. You feel, you feel good? So let's talk this through. What are you going to do here? So I'm going to follow this line. Yes. So I get as close to these relief cuts. Yep. So they fall off. Are you going to do stop. the whole thing at once? No, I'll probably Whoa. stop here and then come in this way, right? Yes. Okay. Oh, so you got it. And oh, so, <laughs> so remember this. You have to be comfortable with the tool. If right. you are in the middle of any power tool, and you don't feel comfortable, turn it off. Yeah. Okay? Good? Good. And by the way, this is just wood. <laughs> that doesn't sound right. No, this is just material. We can go get more material at the right. home center. Okay? This is our learning time. Yep. All right? I love it. Let's do it. Yeah, me too, man. You're doing great, D. Fantastic, Big D. Incredible. Absolutely yeah, I felt fantastic. A little, as I get, got here, I don't know if it's because of the. Did it start to kind of. It felt like I was. I mean, I was still in control, but I could definitely feel, I don't know if it was the grain or something was trying to. Pull it off? It, pull it, it, yeah. So that was really good uh, perception on that because it probably was the grain. This is thick lumber. Yeah. And that, and, and you'll see, look at the grain pattern here. And sometimes, like, if I'm following this grain line here, yeah. early grain, late grain, it may pull you. And also, you'll see that with nails. Nails will follow a grain line if it's a thin nail. Gotcha. Cool? All right. What's next? Good job. Hey, proud of you. Thanks. You're Appreciate welcome. That. Proud of you. Okay. Okay. So next, we're gonna we're gonna cut close to this radius. You know what I really like? I really like how you follow directions just like this. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come out, and we're just gonna come right off like this, and then this one will come like this, and come like this. Okay. Okay. That's our that's our line of attack. Now. The one thing you got to remember <laughs> is that's now my cut line. <laughs> There's sometimes I've gotten wicked confused when I've done this, mm -hmm. and I've actually cut that right on there. Oh, goodness. Uh, that was a lot of extra sanding. Okay, so uh, I think we're in the right position to cut that one. Once okay, you do so that should one. I start from this, this way? Nope. Or you're going to go swoop the whole thing. You don't have to cut. Nope. You're going to feel you can swoop, swoop that whole thing. And then go back this way. Yep. Okay. See how you feel about it. You're getting your confidence level pulling up on it. Well, Sage, I think I'm gonna try to make my own cut line this time, if that's all right. Do it. All right, so I'm gonna get my little pocket square here, and I'm just gonna try to line it up as best I can. And stay outside of that, obviously. Okay. So stay to the left. To my left. Okay, so do it. That looks good to me, buddy. Look at this guy over here. Man. <laughs> hey, Sedge, did you want to tackle these last two big ones here? Oh, you want me to? Yeah. Okay, no problem. Where are you going? <laughs> I'll show you. You said you wanted to use the jigsaw. <laughs> okay, so now we got to do this through mortar. So we're going to waste it out. We're going to drill some holes with this force in a bit. Okay. Okay. Uh, when you use something this size and you're doing it handheld and you don't have a drill press, always make sure that side handle is on there, okay? Because this is, develops a lot of torque. Okay. Okay. 
Now, what we're going to do is we're going to make three holes in here. It'll take out a lot of the waste, but we also have to insert the jigsaw blade so we can cut close to this line. Okay. okay. And you're going to see where we start here and twist it up and cut to the line, then come back and nail it into this corner, and you'll see the whole process. Okay? Awesome. I'll drill a hole, and I'll have you drill a couple holes. Sounds good. Let's good. do it. Okay, come on in. Okay. I'll let you drill this one right here. Make sure there's a little center point on there. Find the center of those little crosses I made there. There you go. Okay, why don't you nail that one? I'm the world's most expensive dust collection connection. Okay, and you're gonna come up and you're gonna, let me do, we'll give you a layout line here. You're gonna cut right to here, then you're gonna stop. Okay. Then you're gonna come in here again, or you can put it in there, start it, and then you're just gonna cut right into here, okay? I cut really close there, but I can make that happen. Right. I'm, okay, good. Start in here. Yep. Good. Good, pull it out. Good. Okay. So now what I want you to do is I want you to swoop up like this. Okay. Come in and turn it. Okay, so one of the things I want to show you is I was noticing when we were cutting in here that sometimes there was a little hesitation in turning. Yeah. And I finally figured it out. This is what I like to do. I like to take the cord and the hose. You see now how this is up here? Right. Okay. So now I can come in and I can turn this in any direction and the holes and the cord don't get in there. Right. Follow? So I'm going to have you come over here and do this. Okay. Perfect. Better all the time? Good.